Hey there, you doers. I want to talk to you about a password manager called 1Password. I've been looking at password managers and one um, aspect of password managers that interests me is the whole idea of the family plans. And so I just want to talk to you about the 1Password uh, family plan. I'm not going to show you the actual uh, application, but I just want to explain to you what I understand is how the the one family one password family manager works. So basically, when you get a one password family account or um, you you purchase that um, you purchase that package, you get five accounts, and what that consists of is an owner. So if you're the person that that buy that 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 starts it all up, you in a sense are the owner, right? And so then you're allowed to have five separate vaults, um, personal vaults, private vaults. So if this is the main account here, you have a personal vault, we'll call, we'll call it uh, P, and then you can have up to four other people in it. They could be part of your family, they could be other individuals that you know, but as I talk you through this, you'll understand how the relationship works. So you could be the, you, we'll call you the primary P. And then, so then you could have, let's just say it's a family here and you have five, uh, five folks total in your family. You can have your spouse, for example. You can have one of your children. So I'll just call this one. And then you could have another child. And just see, let's see, say you have three children or three other accounts. So there's you, your spouse, three other accounts or whatever. It could be your brother, sister, friend, however. But again, I'm going to explain to you the structure here. So now each person in this, in this system gets a private vault and nobody else can see this private vault. So when you set it up, you are the primary person, you have a vault and you have what's called a shared vault. I'll call it S. Okay. A shared vault. Not we just call it shared, not to confuse it with spouse. All right. So then when you set folks up in this account and you have to go through a process where you send an invitation and they have to accept it and then you have to confirm it, but you'll get a hang of that. It's just a double sort of confirmation that you sent it to the right person. The person has to confirm they are the person and you have to confirm again in your side that they're, um, that they're the right person. So anyways, once everyone's set up and you've confirmed them, they all get access to the shared vault. Okay. And what the shared vault does is it allows you or anybody to put a password in there or other document in there and everyone else can see it. And there's different levels of accessibility. There's view only, there's edit, and um, you know, there's um, uh, uh, there's view and there's edit and there's full uh, capability, which I think means you can administer the vault. Um, but basically, basically the principle is you can add and share, and that's the purpose of sharing the vault. And everybody gets that access by default. I believe that the owner um, can um, change that ex access. So let's talk about the vaults in general. So the shared vaults. So you can actually set up more shared vaults and create characteristics. For example, if you're the primary, you could set up another shared vault and only give access to your spouse. So then you too would have access to this, um, to this spouse and then the three children could not see. So if there were some bank accounts you want to share and things like that, you could share it there. However, once you've, um, been confirmed as a user, so say primary invites the, uh, person number one here at first, once they accept the, uh, the invitation, they'll set up their account. You have to set up this extra secret key, but once you're in, you'll be able to see your own vault, but you won't be able to access any other shared vaults and you won't be able to create other vaults. But once the primary confirms you, then you're able to see the shared vault and what will appear is 
uh, a feature to, to create a new vault. And, and so each person's actually able to create their own vault, additional sh vaults, shared vaults or non-shared vaults. So person one can create another vault and, and can choose not to share it, right? And just have another vault. But they'll ask you who, you know, who else do you want to share this with? And this person could share it with perhaps you, the primary, or your, your, your wife or your husband, the spouse, or with number two, or with number two and number three, however they wanted to do it. And you can set up access, you know, do they want view only? Do they want to be edit, um, be able to edit it or other, you know, capabilities. So when the person, when, uh, the person logs in to their account, say I'm number one, what I would be, what I would see in my account is in terms of my vaults that I could see, I would see my, my primary vault. I would see this shared vault and, and then I would also see a vault that I've created, or if say someone else created a vault and gave me access, I would see that vault as well. So basically, um, you can create, everyone can create multiple vaults and share them however they want. And then there's the, the ultimate, the, the main shared vault, which I believe the primary could in fact take away access to certain people if they wanted to, but it's by default set up, All right? So, um, so I think you'll, you, so when you try this out, I think you'll see that, that each person has an ability to create additional vaults. Now, like I said earlier, this private vault that everybody gets, nobody can, else can see that. And uh, you, I don't believe you can share with anybody. That's just your vault, your private vault. If you want to share stuff, you can get it into here. Now, the thing I want to explain is the um, another uh, sort of hierarchy called owner and member. The primary you, the person who sets this up is by default, the owner. And this person, the primary can see different things. They can see all the vaults. So on the, in the menu, on the right side, on the website, there'll be a, there'll be a, a menu. And one of the things they'll see is people. So who's in the, who is set up, um, including guests, but we'll get to that and vaults so and there's other stuff they can see here so if they if they pull up vaults so on the menu on the far right there'll be a there'll be a there'll be vaults there'll be people and other and other things in the menu if they click if you click on vault what you'll see is you'll see a list of all the vaults okay including vaults that other people have set up and that you may not be a member of. So if one of your kids sets up a vault to share with, with the, their brother, sister, or whoever, and you're not set up, you won't see it as a user, as one of your, one of your lists of vaults that you have access to. But as the owner, when you click on vaults to um, look at all the, to manage all the vaults, you'll see them all. And you're able to click on each vault and see who has access to that vault. And in fact, as the owner, you can add yourself to that vault and then you could see it. Okay, so just to be clear, the owner is like an administrator and they can see everything um, in terms of the vaults that exist. Now, if they're not a participant in the vault that would, and they don't make themselves a participant, for example, this vault here that number one, create it to share with number two. If you go in and you click on vaults and you click, you won't be able to get into that vault. However, again, you can go in and administer these vaults and give yourself access and then go in. But, um, you know, you're hoping that is, is you're managing this and giving it for the convenience for your kids to share. And then you're not going to go looking in something that, that they created amongst themselves. However, you can do that just to let you know. So if you're sharing this with people not in your family, that may be an issue, right? So it's not like everybody has their individual account. Um, they do here, which you cannot access the 
primary or anybody any any owner can access it okay so so um that's private so if you want something private you put in your private vault if you want to share it you put in your shared vault okay and you can choose who you share it with for, so as number one i can share it with number two or i can share it with with um with uh, the spouse here or i can share it with everybody or i can share it just with the the primary you know or i can share it with nobody right but, but it's still a shared vault. And the primary can see all those vaults and manage them, all right? So just make that clear. And then also they can manage, they can see all the people and, and manage them, right? So you can, you can suspend people, you can cut their account off completely, you can disconnect them and, um, then they only get, I think, uh, access to their own vault uh, as, um, but not edited. I don't, I don't believe they can um, edit again after that unless you reinstate them. But um, I'm not sure about that. Just check that out. What happens? But the key thing here is that as the primary, you control the administration of the people and the administration of the shared vaults. Um, so now owners and so there's two people there's this is an owner and everybody else is a member okay and members can basically see their shared vaults and their personal vaults and do some other person like i think some other admin kind of things within their own um area but they cannot change anything else they can't look at all they can't see any other vaults they're not a part of they can't um, um, uh, they can't make themselves part of another vault they're not the owner of the vault right so if I if two if one creates this vault two can't I mean three can't go oh I'm not a member so I'm going to make myself a member they can't do that but if you're the owner of the vault you can do whatever you want and give people access to that vault as editors or just as viewers only now um, so the other thing I want to mention is this whole, whole owner member thing. When you, as the, as the primary, when you click on people, you'll see a list of all the people, right? Including guests, but let's just start with the, the five people. If I click on number three, say number three here, right? Say, um, say click on this. What I'll see is their, is, is their profile with, um, uh, with on the side, it'll say, you know, there'll be two two circle um, selection circles, and they'll have um, owner and member, right? And by default, everybody else is a member. Now, I as the primary, I could create another owner. So if I want the spouse to have ownership capability, which means they can do everything I can do, I can do that, right? So if I make my spouse an owner, they now, when they log in, will be able to see all the vaults and all the people and be able to administer things and, and uh, um, you know, and be able to do all the power the admin can do, right? The risk to that is, can tell you, is as another, say, uh, I make someone else an owner, right? And I'm just telling you the capabilities here. If I'm also an owner and I'm not the primary, the person who set up originally, and you make me the owner as well, an owner, I could now go in, look at anybody's um, uh, profile and change their status. So for example, I could go back to the primaries and make them a member. And then that person, the, the primary, now becomes a member and can no longer administer the account. So I tested this out in the uh, in the trial period, which I would recommend you do. Um, again, um, that's just the power of the admin. And so then, uh, then, then I could not get, you know, the primary can't get back control again. It could be a mistake. You just have, hey, fix me, you know, fix it back up and become a member again. So just to let you know that. Now, I'm just going through a number of random things. So I hope you understand the structure here. The primary, again, has the ability to see everything, they invite everyone that, that they'd like to invite, and then 
They can administer the vaults. They can see all the vaults. If they're not a member of it, they could make themselves a member, but that's not the point. But they can they can see all the vaults that have been created. Um, they can manage the the ownership level. They can manage the people. They, they invite the new people, um, the, the people that they want in the family group. You can also invite guests. So when you invite a guest, so say you invite someone you want to be able to share a vault, right? There's just to use one vault. They don't get a personal vault. So say you set up a guest, right? So say say you say you set up a guest. Of, you know you set up a guest here. Now and then you set up. Then you you set them up and you create a vault here. That that say everybody can see, okay, and the guests can see, right? Now the guest has to when you send the invite to a guest, they have to go through the whole setup. They have to get a secret key and everything. Then you have to confirm them, and they're almost a full fledged user except they only they do not get this individual account, uh, individual vault. They only get to see what you share with them, all right? You can also, and they don't even need to be a one password individual user, okay? So they only get a share. So they could they could see what you're, kind of, they can even put in stuff in there as well if they you wanted them to, right? Um, but they don't have their own individual. So it's still kind of a cool feature. Um, now, if you, um, if you, you can invite, say, I'm a, say you're, uh, you know, someone you know is already an individual user, right? And they're a page user and they have their own individual vault. I'll call it like a triangle, right? So you have this person here who has their own individual vault. You could then invite them to share this vault as well or another vault. So now when they log in, um, they will see... They will have a guest account and they'll have an individual account, right? So if you already have some and then the, the someone else shares with you, you'll a family shares with you, you will see in your account, especially in the app, in the app, like there's an app and you can also access through the web. In the app, you'll have two profiles, a guest profile, because you're a guest of the family, and your individual profile. Um, I think you it links them together, but just I'm just trying to explain your ability to share here. So I think that in general for a family, this is a good setup because you want an administrator. So if you have young kids and you want them to have their own private vault, but also share some other logins or, or other account information with them, you can do that pretty easily. Um, the intention, it's pretty easy to administer as administrator, but I'm I just wanted to share with you the, the um, in terms of uh, what you can see and so that others know, you know, if, um, what you can see as well, right? So again, as a primary, you can see all the vaults, you can edit them, you can change them and all that. You can see all the people in their profiles and you can change their owner member status. And you can also see the billing so if you make someone else an owner, they can see the billing and they can change the billing account and things like that. Well, you doers, I hope you check out 1Password Family and I hope this video was helpful in your understanding. Please subscribe.